system which have been based on unlimited greed. Without those two words, there would have been no conquest of colonies, no slavery, and no what we call today one world, one market, the whole concept of globalization. Absolute greed has led the world to a point where we are on the brink of disaster when it comes to the environment, climate change, and survival of our planet. The level that nationalism has reached on this planet reminds me of Hitler. When we speak of nationalism, when we speak of protectionism, we are going back, not forward. Vision Africa 2063, the Africa we want. How can you come to an Africa that we want in an environment which by itself is hostile, volatile, and especially unpredictable? Do you think it's an accident that electorates worldwide are rejecting the government? This is one of the rare times where I find that politicians are not speaking the same language of the nation. And this is happening everywhere. Mr. Trump has been elected not because they love him, but because they don't want the other one. Brexit is the same thing. Australia, Italy, Israel. Elections in France coming with huge risk for unity. Germany. So on one side, we've been working with the rest of the world to develop an air corridor from Asia, Southeast Asia, to Mauritius, through Mauritius to Africa. That was my initiative, a stupid one, I must say. I have permitted because Air Mauritius doesn't have the capacity to become a hub. We can't become a hub because we can't go to too many African countries at the same time. We are going, I think, to Mozambique, Tanzania, we are losing one. So I met recently with President Kenyatta in, in Kenya and we agreed to develop Nairobi as a hub for Southeast Asia, channeling customers through Mauritius. So this is the corridor, or air corridor aspect where we said this contribute to communication connectivity. Number two, financial connectivity, which means that our role is also to drain resources from the rest of the world and channel it through Mauritius to African countries in the Those are billions of dollars of investment which can be channeled through Mauritius. We have been holding this uh, training uh, for the last 17 years and actually it's the 36 uh, uh, course. Uh, we organize these courses at the regional level this is for Africa. Um, we have the participant, participants from 18 countries, actually. Uh, this is the second time uh, we are going to organizing it in, in Mauritius uh, on a regional uh, basis. And, and the idea is to bring uh, together trade policy makers uh, and academics in order to see the links between trade trade policy, what's happening in the world, and know better about best practices in, in different countries in order to make trade an instrument for development and for, for growth. So, so the idea is to uh, better our know knowledge about trade issues, about trade policy making, and also learn from each other. What we have seen, I mean, uh, the, uh, not only the feedback directly from the participants, but throughout the years we have been improving in terms of the methodology and in, 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 in terms of how we structure this, this uh, exchange and this learning process. And for us as an international organization, we are part of the UN Secretariat, we have been uh, delighted that over the time uh, we have this, this courses but have been recognized by the member, member states of the United Nations. We believe that in all regions of the world, uh, countries are taking benefit and trade policy makers are, tra are taking great benefit of this, of this uh, 
we have a good feedback in in the meetings, but also political recognition, which is what makes us uh, uh, also uh, move forward and, and continue with with great hope. I, I think we heard today. His Excellency and Minister of Trade with a very powerful message that we are at crossroads uh, politically, uh, but in, in particular, but also uh, climate-wise, environmental, uh, environment, uh, if we look into the in, into environment, so uh, many challenges indeed, because we, we are seeing a, a much that we live in a globalized uh, economy. We see a very fragmented world as well with a great growth of nationalism, not only, but particularly, I would say, in certain developed countries. That's a matter of concern, because we are all working for a sustainable agenda, what we call the uh, Agenda 2030 in, in, in the United Nations, in which the overall, the, 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 the overarching theme is leaving no one behind. But if we continue with this nationalist, uh, protectionist uh, kind of approach, we will certainly leave many behind. And therefore, Africa, we need to uh, really struggle to uh, reinforce the idea of regional integration in Africa.